IRS Circular 230. The advice provided in this hangout is not intended to be used. It cannot be used by you or any other person for or entity for the purpose of avoiding penalties that may be imposed under the Internal Revenue Code or any appropriate state or local tax law. Further, this advice is not intended to be used it cannot be used by you for the purpose of promoting, marketing, or recommending any tax-related matters addressed within to another party. Blah, blah, blah. Ta-da! Hey, now, wait a minute. You forgot my disclaimer. Yeah, but you're not running it. <laughs> <laughs> you should still add that as a disclaimer every, every time I show up that you can ask me payroll tax questions, but don't ask me anything about tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where's my headset? Are we On your head. There we go. Well, it, no, you were still being my speakers. Am I live? I'm not live. Why am I not live? Chris, you uh, should be live. It said that you were. It said that you were starting the live. Well, my... It's not on my channel, is what I was complaining about. Okay. Maybe we're there now. Slow today. It's me running slow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there we are. There we are. You still there? Everybody yep. still there? Mr. Adrian. Here, here. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning. morning. Well, that's an unusual background for Adrian. It is. I decided to go from my office, which is <laughs> that wall, <laughs> to here. <laughs> Well, at least there's something the behind me. There's something behind me now, yeah. There, there's you got actually, a door frame. And a, a person. Frame. There's a person behind the <laughs> well, there's actually, a, there's, there's a person there, too. <laughs> oh, two feet. Yeah, but we've seen him through the door before. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, but just changed up a bit. Seth, Seth has a training class, so he won't be here. Mm, bummer. So now it's I'm talking ask you, Bruce, what do you do to get your clients in for tax planning? For tax planning? Mm-hmm. What do I do? I, I didn't hear you, Ted. Care with a really huge bill. <laughs> well, I usually just send out letters saying, Gina, are you still there? <laughs> I usually just send out letters saying we need to talk about such and such. The the business clients who I get monthlies and quarterlies from, I just mention it to them. Say, hey, we need to really do some planning here. Gina, where'd you go? <laughs> Adrian, what do you do? Uh, same sort of idea. You know, it's it, it comes up in conversation. You know, yeah. deliber deliberately comes up in conversation. Well, yeah. Um, you know, and most corporate clients, which are you know, 98 percent of our client base, you know, are very happy to sit down with it, um, especially if they've had a uh, a good previous tax year because of us. You know, they're more than happy to say, "Okay, what can we do now?" Because chances are they've expanded their business. Right. Or they all, all they've got, up, you know. Uh, ideas going forward about what they want to do with the business. You know, tax management is part of that. You know, so I, I put it as a um, a part of their you know their their continued business planning. I see. I see. See, 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 seem to like the idea anyway. Well, yeah, and it works. Hang on, I'm supposed to. I'm being asked. He wanted to know if we started yet. Let's see. P e t e r. There he is. Who just came in? It's Josh. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody? Good. How are you, Josh? Doing good. Uh, Gina. Gina asked, "How do you, how do we get clients in for tax planning?" You, so you, it's your turn. You just got here just in time. <laughs> well, usually I send down an email or make phone calls. Basically, go down the list as well as a lot of my clients are already patterned to that. You know, fourth quarter, that's the time of year when we start looking at financials right, right after the September. And so basically, either I call or email. So Adrian and I, we both agree that it just kind of comes up in conversation deliberately. Well, that too. <laughs> plus, I, plus, I'll put it in my newsletter as well. 
Uh, you are the man with newsletters. I never, we never get around to newsletters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a monthly one. I think it works. A lot of people that I didn't think would even care about it do do enjoy it. Yeah, same with me. The return on investment is like huge because I've had people that were on the fence of you know switching. They'll send me an email after a newsletter, contacting me right away, or a client will think of a question that they want to ask me. So it's like funny when my newsletter goes out. Sometimes that same day, I can look in my thing and see when they read it and then within an hour they right. called. Yeah. So it's kind of just a reminder. So, I don't know. so we're using our blog I guess in that sort of sense. But, uh, well I'm using that too but some people don't go to that so I'll put my blog articles and link back to my blog in my newsletter. All right. So Which, you I mean that would save you some time there but still be getting to the people that aren't reading your blogs. That's a good idea. Get, getting folks in for tax planning. Good morning, Peter. How are you, sir? Can you hear us? Uh-oh. Peter can't hear us, I don't think. Or is it just me? Uh, I don't think I don't he cares. Wave to him. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see us. We got that much going on for us. Hopefully, he's got the chat going. So, yep. Yeah. Bummer. He can't hear us. Oh, that's oh. awful. C mm. Can you read lips? <laughs> <laughs> well, he didn't. He didn't respond. So I'm guessing not. He was looking down at the time you said that, though. <laughs> I'm asking him in chat. <laughs> I'm going to take that as a probably no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Getting, getting, see, getting folks. What, am I, what was I doing? Oh, getting folks into the. For tax planning, I wonder what happened to Gina. There, there she is. She is. Oh, sorry. sorry, got way late. <laughs> so, were you? Were you? Get, did you get all the answers that we were spitting out to you? I did. I did. <laughs> um, my problem is the the new guy on the block, the the guy that's the self-employed owner, who you know after the first year he's been working real hard and all of a sudden he finds out he has a profit and his expenses are low and he has to pay money now to you know <clears throat> has a big tax bill at the end of the year he's surprised but he didn't actually do his taxes on time he's just now getting his taxes done <laughs> and he's thanking tax you know deadline so here we are in um September, less, yeah, and he does have no month. idea of where he's at and what he's doing. Nice. Gets Ted, how do you get him in for planning? Uh, I just kind of force him. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Wrong hand. <laughs> Scare them, man. Hey, I basically just call them up and say, listen, we need the tax plan. Or of the clients where you know you do the yearly bookkeeping for them, I tried in September to get a hold of their books and stuff like this. At least see what they're doing. Ideally. Yeah, uh, ideally. yeah, that's ideally. Does your new guy have a QuickBooks? Is he in QuickBooks, Gina? Um, which one? <laughs> your new, your new one that you were referring. The one I'm referring to, actually, you know, they do have QuickBooks. They're just so late. And they just feel like that um, doing bookkeeping is a non-productive activity, and they want to keep the cost down as much as possible. And they're doing other things to make money in their business, and don't feel it's important. So why did they? Why did they bother even coming to you? They have to get their taxes done. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> there's regulations. I'm serious. I'm very serious. And so, you know, they get their taxes done and they say, well, how do I have a profit? Where's the money? And you say, well, um, you bought a big piece of equipment this year. You took $50,000 more out of the company. 
simply um, it's just what happens when people are running their business on their checkbook instead of actually having real numbers to look at. But if you go, I mean, if you turn around to them and say, well, you bought a big piece of equipment this year, you know, uh, what are you going to, have you thought about how that depreciates and, you know, all these sorts of things, you know, then they might, they might go, oh, what do you mean by that? Then, you know, you have that conversation. <clears throat> that's, that's where I'm trying to get to, is to have that conversation. Mm. They're so busy doing what they're doing that you can't even get them to stop to talk to you. Do you, you say you them? just are... Do you say you're just now following their 2011? Yeah, <laughs> they're a bit late. <laughs> that, that convers well, if you the reason I ask is if you're in the middle of that conversation, say, hey, this is what your tax bill is. But if you would talk to me before this year's over, we could save you. Do you know, right, some things. Us, talk right. about retirement. Talk about other ways of reducing that profit so you don't pay so much tax. Yeah, but the problem is that initial getting over the hump and getting them to come talk to you. With new clients, I usually say that, especially if it's someone like that and just doing their tax return, or in the initial consultation, I'll say, hey, you know, if you do tax plan, I'm going to save you more than the fees that you're actually going to pay me. People love that. I basically tell them I'm working for free as a, right. you know, the, the pitch, you know, when I'm first doing that. And I had a couple of people say, hey, that was the reason why they came with me it was that. Okay, great. Yeah. Does that help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, have you got QuickBooks 13 on your computer? Uh, yes, I do. I don't suppose you'd want to do a little pimp, would you? Sh share it with everybody. No complaining, just kind of share it with everybody. <laughs> I don't have it up and running yet. You, you, you want me to pimp my QuickBooks 2013, <laughs> huh? Well, Is that like pimp my ride? Yeah, that's, like usually, that. that's usually making it look better. But what we saw the other <laughs> week, it doesn't look good. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't do that, but. <laughs> no, just, just a few minutes, quick quick show it off, if you don't mind. No, um, I'm, I'm firing it up as we speak. Hold on, let there's me. A, there's, a, there's a thing this afternoon, and I can't remember who's putting it on. It's a um, two hour Joe webinar. Woodard. Yeah, Joe Woodard. Is doing a thing today about what the new features in QuickBooks 213. Yeah, I have it up and running on Windows 8. Hey Nancy, you could turn it into a pimp my QuickBooks because of all the changes you said should be made and the colors and all that good stuff. <laughs> so, so basically, you would do an overhaul for it. It would be a pimp my QuickBooks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see if my husband can get right on coding. <laughs> right. Uh, we do that. We end up with a brand new software. So. <laughs> Pretty Na much. Na Na Nancy's Sunburst software. <laughs> Nancy's Sunbird software. <laughs> they're they're expecting uh, the QuickBooks for Mac to be ready by the 24th. Okie doke. Can you guys see my screen? 2013. Yes, ma'am. I'm fixing okay, the makeup. Okay, welcome to QuickBooks 2013. Um, <laughs> just, just a quick overview, if you don't mind, Nancy. A slightly redesigned and perhaps cleaner homepage um, that I do like. Uh, navigation on the left. These are shortcuts to commonly used QuickBooks. Which takes place as a toolbar that used to run across the top. Yep. Um, cool things you can add. You can add your own personal shortcuts down here. I don't have anything in it yet, so it's not hopping up. Um, you can see to-do lists, and of course this is a test file, so I don't right. really have any like things to do today. But if I did, they would pop up here as reminders or alerts. Um, I can view balances, um, shortcuts to my applications. And these are applications that are on the Intuit App Center, the um, fee-based ones. And, and uh, log in here and find apps that work with QuickBooks. Um, it's only the apps that are on the Intuit App Center or the fee-based ones. Um, redesign of forms. Uh, nice little ribbon toolbars across the top. 
I, I do these. Um, you know, you can get to formatting stuff, and you can actually go straight to the the um, oh that that. Sorry, I've been up, I've been up since four a.m. I don't know right. where I am. That's um, all right. In, you can get directly into the layout designer, which I think is cool. Um, one click instead of several, you can send things directly from the estimate and the other forms, run reports, uh, you can m collapse the left navigation, give you a little more room to work in. If you want to get rid of the ribbon at the top, you can click this funny little four-cornered arrow thing and it pops this up into Falcon. Uh, gives you a, a few more lines to work with. You can collapse it back down. Uh, you can change views. You can get rid of the left icon bar. Put it put back the on top. top. One on. Yeah. Um, you can still get to your Windows list. So is the, is is it a whole new interface? Yeah, you know, I mean, some of these things really should have been changed a long time ago. I really like what they've done with the centers. Uh, you can get access to all the transactions. You can put in a whole bunch of contacts. There's now like 24 different fields that you can choose from. Up here, oops, sorry, wrong little <laughs> icon. Um, you're going to notice this overlay. Is that blinking or is that my imagination? It, it's your eye. No, it's not. I don't see anything blinking. Put it back. I can't see it now. Nancy, you still with us? Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, sorry, no, I'm kind of like freaking out down here. Hold on. Where do you see it blinking? Hold, hold, hold on, did it stop? No. You guys can't see this blink. No. No. Nothing's blinking, dear. It is, Bruce. I swear <laughs> to God, this is not my eye. <laughs> or eye, as the case may be. All right. This, this whole thing is jumping. Maybe you should quit playing with it then. <laughs> um, anyway, if you can add all kinds of contacts. Um, you've got alternate emails, alternate email too. You can add information about LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, put in URLs, Skype IDs, and you there's like 24 of them that you can choose from and yeah, then eight of them will appear here you can put in to-do notes as well as regular notes um, so that's just kind of interesting on um, the employee center it looks like that customer Sam needs to be on bill.com he owes you a bunch uh, yeah I know um, in the employee center you never have to grab a drop down list and then select something. You've got all of these tabs right down the, the left hand side. To me, this is awesome. Um, it's so hard when you get somebody on the phone to say, okay, go edit the employee record. See where it says switch tabs? Okay, good. Grab that little drop down arrow, you know, the, 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 the little, you know, little, little black down arrow. Well, where is it? Bah, 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 and switch to. So this is going to make getting around in this a little bit easier. Uh, really, you got a, you've got more. I don't know. I don't know if I want to say more room, <laughs> or if it just looks bigger. I still don't think it, you're you're viewing any more items in the earnings section than in 2012, but it just, 
it, it looks clearer and maybe it's because it's side by side and I really have to get out of this because it really is okay. it's jumping and it's driving me absolutely <laughs> bat whack. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. Good morning, Seth. How are you? Good. How are you? We're good. I just had Nancy uh, put her on the spot, kind of give us a quick preview of 2013. I saw that. Sorry. I apologize, Nancy. I guess I should have forewarned you. Hey, I'm <laughs> too about it. <laughs> You'll get me later, I'm sure. Yes, I will. <laughs> now, why can't I unshare this? Hmm. So I do want to say I'm still waiting for my licenses come into it. Um, I did call again yesterday and was told that there was some kind of glitch in the system, that the licenses that were should have been automatically issued were not. And I happen to be one of those lucky ones. Whoops. So if you're a pro advisor and you have not received your license, I recommend that you call and make sure that you do have, you know, that they have put you in the system and you did get your license like you were supposed to. Hey, hey, N Nancy, uh, a quick um, question. The, on, on 2013, the, the forms, I was playing around with forms again this morning, trying to make something pretty. And uh, is there any changes to the forms design? I itself? haven't. I haven't no. I haven't noticed that. I don't, I don't see any ability to add extra columns or put in a column that does formulas. I mean, that's. Yeah. I, I see a lot of people ask for. You know, we want it in a column that does a formula, and to be honest with you, that's where a third-party app needs to come in because it's then it's more on a on a case by case basis I, I yeah. can't see I, I being a developer I don't see how it, Intuit could do something like that that would meet a formula need for each and every industry I mean that's got to be something like really specific mm. yeah I mean it's, it, it, this is what I was thinking this morning you know I thought well I've got to look something that looks aesthetically very nice and easy to create. It also has got functionality if I could find it. And uh, there was not, I couldn't find anything third party that was going to work either at the moment. What anyway. are you looking for? Well, I started off thinking, I started off, okay, I had a, an invoice, an invoice form, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make it look nicer because we're just using generic invoice forms. So I, uh, you know, I thought, okay. I can go into the the editing tool as it is in the 2012 versions, you know, and it's clunky, it's horrible, it's boring, it, it can't do what I want. Uh, it's not a graphics tool, um, and it's not like you know I could go into Excel or, or Access and make you no know, nice looking forms that do something as well. Um, so, do you want something that, like rounded corners yeah, and I, I, like colored exactly. background? Okay. Um, hold on. You can go and download pretty <laughs> <laughs> form templates. Uh, sorry, that's about the, the the only thing I can can come up with um, it, for for a term. It, and and they really are pretty. And I mean, they're, they're yeah, they're real nice. That's where I've got mine. Um, you can get different colored backgrounds like mm. some of them are green some of them are blue well I know I, I saw I, I saw that you know and um, indeed I, I, I did download it and I noticed when I went in eventually uh, there's a there was some sort of tool there that i would not seen before or it was not a tool but it was something into it had uh, that allowed you to do like a form creation um, and this was yes. something Brand new. I've not seen it before. So, and I, I went through the steps, and they give you to end of October, seventeenth of October, that you can make changes to anything you make now. Otherwise, you've got to pay it. You know, you pay four dollars for a change or something later on. Yeah. Um. If you go to lists and templates and create form design. Yeah. You That's... can go in there and and you can really, I mean, you can, you can get something that. 
it, it looks nice. I won't say it's comparable to like going to a printer mm -hmm. and having them do stationery, like invoice stationery for you. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing that you can do, and, and something that I've done, um, <laughs> is I've gone into, into Word mm -hmm. and I created almost like a like a letterhead. Yep. And then I go in and I and I take off like all the the boundary boxes and this, that, and the other thing. And and just print my invoices on that letterhead. Um, I, I have a really nice laser color printer um, that is a real workhorse. It's a Lexmark. I cannot tell you how much I love Lexmark printers. Um, I have one sitting up at the office right now that's eight years old. The other one's five. And I will tell you, the, the eight-year-old one prints all of our manuals. And the smallest manual is 150 pages and it's mm -hmm. double-sided. And I mean, in the last couple of years, more people have wanted electronic download, and they get the manual in PDF. But yeah. still, a lot of people like manuals in the three-ring binders, so they can dog ear stuff. Yeah, Bruce still has it, and you know, Bruce, I I, I know you like that, but you should really like throw it out because at this <laughs> point, it's like it's ancient. I know that. It's like totally flipping obsolete. Um, but then all my notes would be gone. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, invest in a, in a really nice laser printer. Um, play around with not only that, that online mechanism for mm. designing your forms or... It, Play around with creating something really nice in Word. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I can certainly do that, you know, and um, you know, print on top of that. But I'm trying to. I was hoping, you know, there was something integrated. You know, I was when I did the searching today, there was people talking about all sorts of graphic design programs and saying, can we use everything from AutoCAD to you know Adobe Illustrator and everything like in between. Um, you know, and uh, the only reason I got onto this is because I received invoices recently that definitely come through QuickBooks uh, because I recognized a lot of what was there. Uh, but then they just looked incredibly professional, extremely pretty. Well, you know, you can tell you from having a design background, it actually pays to hire a graphic designer sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'll vouch for that. I mean, it really does. I mean, over the years, I mean, people always kind of look at my stuff and going, wow, how'd you do, where'd you get that done? I'm going, me, but, you know, I have a design background as well as an accounting background. So, one of the few people in college that has a double degree in design and accounting. <laughs> so, are you for hire? <laughs> um, you know, I can actually put you in touch with some really great guys that have been doing this for 20, 30 years. Yeah, I know, but I was asking about you. Uh, <laughs> I barely have enough time to do my own. Anybody else's. Okay, that answers my question. Thank now, Rhonda, you. Rhonda, I know you're. I know you're muted. You don't do invoices in QuickBooks, do you? I am not muted now. Oh. And um, invoices in QuickBooks. Yes, I do. Well, I take that back. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, Brad prefers me not to. He prefers to use his program. Um, but I do do them still. In, in so you have a whole separate program for invoicing that Brad likes you to use? Uh, yeah. Uh, he likes it, yeah. He or he likes it. I hate it. He. <laughs> um, yeah, either that or we'll use like just a Word document too. We're still using that. Um, 
but I do. Um, I still invoice in QuickBooks to keep all the accounting right. Oh, that helps. Yeah. Because if not, then I'm lost, and then I don't know where to put my money. Well, I was just going to ask Adrian how beautiful did he want it to be. He got up. <laughs> Hey, Adrian, how how yep. pretty do you need it to be? <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you yeah you can't really see this, but I've uh, I he can't see it. I'm sure. There's a little swoosh in the middle. Well, that's the, the swoosh is. I mean, is this thing, which is the yeah. logo, but it's like uh, a watermark oh, swoosh. Watermark. It, it, yeah. It's watermark. And at the bottom, I've got all these little buildings. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you can see that. It's very faint. Yeah, yeah I can, Adrian, I can if you see save it. it as a PDF, you can share your screen. <laughs> well, that's true. But... <laughs> Sorry to point actually, out the obvious. I, 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 actually, that's, that, 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 that's in QuickBooks at the moment, so uh, I haven't exported it anywhere or right. just printed it off earlier on. But you know, it's, I was just trying to think. You know, it's it, I was sending doing invoices yesterday, as uh, as people know, and uh, it's like, God, it's so boring. <laughs> I wanted something that you know was just a little more colourful and a little more interesting. So that yeah, was the first thing I did when I walked in the office this morning, messing around with that. Yeah, you know, if you do away with the lines, the blocks, the invoices look cleaner and they look okay. more modern. Ah, I can do that. That's, I like that's, to use that's the easy. Rounded corners. I haven't figured that one out yet, Seth. <laughs> Here, I'll, 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 I'll run a sample of one of my own invoices for you guys to admire. Why, thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> save, it, save it to PDF and share your screen, Seth. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Bank of America credit cards. What do you mean, how does it work, uh, Gina? <laughs> does it? Bank of America uh, credit cards does not work that well downloading to QuickBooks. So can you download all of your um, receipts and everything into bill.com and then have it sync with QuickBooks for Bank of America? Seth, do you know the answer to that one? No, you can't download credit card activity into bill.com. Yeah. What you would do is you would take the statement that you get. Let's say they email you a PDF, mm -hmm. and you would upload that statement to bill.com and enter it as a bill to be paid. But the activity, you'd still have to rely on the downloader and manually enter it if the native download isn't working. Hmm. Okay. So, because bill.com is merely on the AP side, it's merely a means of processing a payable. Well, a credit card's a payable. You gotta get Yeah, the but it's, but again, so you process that credit card bill that you get that says here's your balance due, right, with the minimum payment due. And that's the part of it that you can process. Otherwise, you would have to directly enter the individual credit card charge somehow into bill.com, which obviously would be too cumbersome. And in the QuickBooks, it's too cumbersome, too. <laughs> and you're talking over 50 transactions. <laughs> what I like to do in a situation like that, I go into the credit card's website, I download a CSV file, and I format it in Excel in such a way that it makes it very quick to just copy, alt, tab, and paste into the fields in QuickBooks. And I can bang through 50 transactions very quickly that way. Okay. That's the best solution I can offer you on that one. Okay. So how's that invoice coming there, uh, Seth? Um, well, I stopped to talk, so I got distracted. <laughs> I interrupted him. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> you know, by the way, maybe we should talk about the topic that is being discussed at the moment in the uh, social network and tech help group, which is blog hijacking. You guys feel like talking about that? Sure. So, no, because I'm a little hot under the collar about it. Well, first of all, take it as a compliment, because it means somebody likes your content better than their own. Secondly, <laughs> grumble, grumble, it hurts grumble. them more than you. Yeah, I, huh? Well, first, it first of all, it hurts them more than you. What is the What's blog hijacking, by the way? Somebody, Somebody takes a blog, blog post and basically copies it verbatim and publishes it as though it were their own. Uh. 
And sometimes they'll change some of the wording slightly so that they think they're you know fooling Google, which they're not. Google is if they're, if they're the kind of person that's doing this in the first place, chances are Google is smarter than they are. So you know, but it hurts them more than it hurts you because Google can see the timeline. They can see that yours was posted first, so Google will index that and see that here's the original, and then they'll essentially, and I'm of course filling in some blanks here, but then Google's going to say, here's this moron who copied it and put it in their own blog. Let's blacklist them for SEO purposes. So what they've done is in an effort to try and boost their own rankings, they've done the exact opposite. So, you know, and the reality, and what you can do is I, I posted the video up in, in the thread there, um, my video on Google Alerts. Or if you search my YouTube channel, I have a video that shows you how to use Google Alerts. So you, you want to set up a search in Google for certain keywords to show up so that if somebody does plagiarize your stuff, you'll get an email about it from Google. So like I have certain key terms, many of which include the word QuickBooks. A lot of my blog posts are on that topic. So I get notified every time new content goes up anywhere on the web with those key phrases. <clears throat> and so I just monitor that. I look at those emails every day. I just scan them kind of quickly. And if anything catches my eye, I, 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 I you know, I, I, I look at it. But the other thing is your blog software also should pick it up and find it and, and register a ping back because it'll recognize the content and, you know, right. it'll let you know. So you're, especially if you're using WordPress. Well, one, <laughs> you know. one, one, one thing as well that I've noticed is on, our, on, on the system we use, obviously I, I, I either use Google Analytics to track our website and the blog that sits within the website uh, or my web hosting uh, has another tool that's extremely good too. Um, and I can see who obviously goes to our blog, you know, and I can see an IP address and some other information. And there's certain blog posts that certain IP addresses go back constantly, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, they've read it once, why they're in again, okay, twice, three times, maybe it's that interesting. Um, but eventually, you know, you get somebody going back 10, 20 times. You think something is up here, and maybe that's what it is, Seth. People are going back there, you know, copying things. Or... Actually, more likely, because if I'm going to copy something, I'm going to go in there once, I'm going to highlight the whole text and copy and paste it into a Word document. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and so what I'll do is, you know, go there once, maybe twice, the second time to come back. I'm thinking what you're describing is more likely, and I know this happens with me, especially if your blog is sort of tutorial in nature, Mm -hmm. People come. People will bookmark it and use it as a reference. I know. I have a guy who, for years to this day, goes back to one of my posts on payroll every time he processes the payroll. So uh, he's visiting uh, that blog post every two weeks, basically, to refer back and remember. All right, here's what I need to do. So it's well, possible that that's what's going on. Well, I mean, that, if if that's what's going on, that's useful too. So you know. Yeah. Nancy, did you get hijacked? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Seth, you said WordPress would find it? it. It's not guaranteed, but it should register a pingback if it recognizes that the content is substantially similar. Now, one caveat is if the blog hijacker is savvy enough, they'll know to turn that feature off on their blog because normally, by default, WordPress is set to notify other blogs if it has similar or related content. That's why you get pingbacks. So, okay. and especially if it's done in the WordPress world. But again, the, the real way to, to sort of make sure that, you know, this doesn't happen, or that if it does, you can, all you have to do, obviously, is notify them and say, hey, you plagiarized my blog, please remove this content. And by law, they have a certain amount of time in which they have to make sure they do that. <clears throat> so, you know, obviously reach out to them and let them know that you're aware of this. Um, I mean, they, they didn't get very creative. I mean, not only did they take it, like, word for word, it, some of them, they even took my graphics. <laughs> it was, you know, I, I mean, it was like, oh, this is what my blog post would look like in these colors. Hmm. Are there, are, is, this, is, this, is this blog in the U.S.? Yes, it is. Alabama. Why don't you? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you have. I don't mind. To, to be honest, I don't mind divulging who they are, even because, as far as I'm concerned, by doing this, they open themselves up to that. So. Well, then you go ahead. Well, I, I, mean, I, I said I was going to be good. They're using your images, 
Are they your images, or did you buy the images? Or are they like stock photography? Yeah. Yeah. If they're stock photography and you've bought them legitimately, and you're using them legitimately, and they 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 now take them, they're in copyright um, infringement of who of, of the stock photography company. So I mean, and those guys will go after them. Yeah, you I know, just posted the link issue. to the guilty blog in the chat, by the way. And and the reason I say this is that I I read a, an article about this recently. Um, where some blogger actually got in serious trouble. You know, what was that? Um, yeah, I don't know. Some blogger got in serious trouble anyway, and uh, from a lawsuit point of view, you know, and that's you know, something maybe you want to just mention to whoever owns those photography images, if they're not yourself. We should all send them a message for on behalf of you, Nancy. Actually, if you click that link. That that blog post that comes up is mine. Yep. Um, I'm sitting here looking at it. <laughs> so I say, yeah, this looks awful familiar. <laughs> and yeah, so what you should do is you should index each post's URL and email them and say you need to remove this. Yeah, I know. I I I was just notified this morning. And what they can do is they can put your RSS feed in their blog, and that's okay because it will give a blurb and link back to you. And that's not only a, not only is that acceptable, that's a good practice, right? Like, like I have I don't do it directly in my blog, but I think Nancy, you're aware that anytime you publish something new, I use FeedBurner to take your post and broadcast it to my Twitter followers. Right. Yes, I I know that. I, I, well, I finally figured that out. It, this one's mine also. Oh, there's more than one. Yeah. Well, they must like your stuff really good. Like I said, and I'm not even kidding, take it as a compliment, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't follow up and do something about it. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, oh. What's weird about this one is this one is responding to a question from somebody by the name of Stephanie. Was that on your blog yes. also, Nancy? Yes. So oh, really? on, that, on my oh blog, God. I have a Ask the Experts right. form, and that question came Dude, in on that right. form. Oh, my goodness. Um, I can check. Who is this person? Well, click and on I the hope they're not doing taxes. Beverly Lang. Maybe they're copying other people's tax returns and, and filing them. God! I hope they're not doing tax returns. <laughs> Golly, that's not good. <laughs> I haven't done anything except put all his receipts from 2012 into an Excel. Oh. They got testimonials. There's a whole group of them. I fit <laughs> Ren's landscape. These guys are great with a quick copy and paste. That's my right testimonial for them. <laughs> <laughs> now they're not your testimonials, are they, Nancy? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you need to look at that and see. <laughs> you know, it it's kind of like mm, around five. F bomb, F bomb, F bomb. I don't have time to deal with this F bombing shit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. <laughs> Me up as a you know into reseller. Yeah, I saw that. I was reading that. You know, I mean, I, they have a lot I, of rules. Part of me <laughs> just wants to get hold of Intuit and say, "Look at this. What do you think of this great Intuit reseller now?" Yeah, yeah. Intuit solution provider channel sales manager gives them a. Um, uh, you know, a, a, a nice report as so well. Except, except Simon is no longer there. I don't think. Yeah. We have a Kathleen That's Graham. Not... She might be. <laughs> you know, it's just like. Well, you're like, you're you're I way up like north. Contacting in the, the south. He say T C Johnson, and saying she sinned. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thou shalt not Person steal. <laughs> Lee. It looks like Adrian Montgomery's her uh, culprit. She's the search engine marketing inbound marketer, and then uh, Kathleen Graham's the marketing advisor, SEO advisor. 
even though it has Beverly Lane's name on it. I'm looking at the About Us to meet our team. Yeah, that's... Are those real people? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe no <laughs> we'll see Nancy's picture in here. <laughs> <laughs> we should. She's done a lot of the blog post. Yeah, this well, is... Well, somebody else did a lot of the blog posts, too. Well, you... It, it says is. posted by. It doesn't say written by. That's interesting. And maybe yeah, it was there, maybe they honestly didn't know better, and their intention was to mm -hmm. just reshare great content. But they should know better, especially if they have a team dedicated specifically to internet marketing. <laughs> oh yeah, two of them. I mean, they have a search <laughs> engine marketing inbound marketer on their team. I would hope that person understands she, these things. She oh, likes Bill.com. Yeah, they, yeah, they've got Bill.com in the background. <laughs> Hang on a second. Look, that, apart from, apart from their obviously you know plagiarizing um, information that belongs to somebody else, also perhaps images. They, I mean, there's two on, on their uh, Meet Our team. They have got Intuit people. Because there's Chad Galloway with an Intuit email address, and there's Megan Libardi with an Intuit email address. I wonder if they know they work for her, or if well, they're just I, copying on that. That's interesting, that, yeah. I'm wondering about that because, um, you know, do Intuit, if, if this is an issue with this particular website and whoever the company is behind it, do Intuit want to be associated with that? Oh, I wonder how the pastor feels about it. Well, like I said, I want to contact him and say, hey, you know, she, she's sitting out there. I don't know. I, th I think I'd almost call into it. I am thinking of forwarding this page to one of my friends at Intuit, saying, hey, do you guys know that these people are doing this? <laughs> That's yeah. not cool. Like, good. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... I don't know. Maybe I'll get sued, but who cares? Um, the website we're talking about for the people who are watching is Diversified Business Solutions. And they don't do taxes from what I can tell, so that kind of makes me feel a little bit better on that front because I would hate to think how they're getting their tax information. <laughs> What did it, it is? Just like it's all just bookkeeping. Yeah, they're just QuickBooks and. They don't say anything about accounting anywhere, do they? Not, not a word. Uh, it says bookkeeping book services. Book bookkeeping services. Training. Quarterly. I wonder. I wonder how they do the training. If, well, shut it, Bruce. <laughs> oh, I, I take that back. She changed the name of the person who asked the question. Oh, she did. Maybe she's listening right now. But you know what? That shows that she deliberately tried in some yeah. way to cover it up. That's to cover it up. Works. So she knew it was wrong. Because I, wow. I had to go back and find my post. And, and actually it was a, a, a gal by the name of Carrie that asked me. Now, are those actual designations with Intuit or are those actual... Yeah, they're saying they're into uh, it they have the Intuit Payment Network, so I have a feeling that those people are either at least meant to represent that product. Hmm. On Nancy, I've, I think you should call into it. Quite honestly, I just emailed one of my friends at Intuit with a link to the page, saying, "Does Intuit know that these guys are holding out their employees as part of their team?" Yeah, because what that, you know what's you know what's weird though is when I, I just took the first paragraph and dropped it into a Google search, and their post shows up first and yours shows up second. That is Mine's wrong. May sixteenth. Yours is it says June twentieth. Theirs says July uh, June twentieth, two thousand eleven. Theirs says July twenty third, two thousand twelve. Yeah, but that could when that could be when that could um, be when Google indexed it. In Google, in, in, exactly. Yeah, because mine was published May sixteenth, two thousand and twelve. Now, which one are you? Oh, sorry, which which one did you take the first sentence to? The one that starts the, creating a job cost report. Oh right, hey. no, I was looking. I was looking at payroll for work hours and drive time invoicing. Okay, but I just I just pasted the same first paragraph into the chat here. If you if you paste that into a Google search, 
you'll see that their post and your post both show up, and you can tell that they're verbatim. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I, just read, I, just, I just read under the accreditations um, bit on the uh, About Us. They've got business and ethics and proper business practices. <laughs> <laughs> And this would not be one of them. <laughs> no, this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> it's the same way. Same way in the middle of the country, Nancy. Theirs comes first, and yours is second. Hmm. And third. Hmm. Isn't that would, interesting? If it changes to our blog, it would re-index it to a later date. Wow. So how's that invoice coming, Seth? <laughs> oh, I have it. It's on my desktop. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Adrian, this bud's for you. <laughs> uh. Hold on. Wow. I almost feel like writing a blog post bashing them. No, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not going to. You can, you, can, you can write a blog post um, bashing the whole concept of people stealing bits, but not uh, not pointed at anybody. In now, Adrian, what do you think of that? I don't see. I see your face. Uh, look at my screen. Click on my thumbnail. That's nice. That's the one that you used in your uh, video, Seth. Yeah, I've had the same input team, that's all. So now it's purple. I think it used to be red. Can, can you send that to Bill.com that way? .com, well, I do send, like, if I invoice you and you put that into your Bill.com as a bill to be paid, then yeah. Right, it was a Bill.com address. So right. So how does that appear on your desktop for that? It doesn't appear on my desktop. It goes into my Bill.com inbox, which I get an email notification letting me know that you've submitted an invoice there, and then I can go in and basically I, I key the, the invoice information, just very basic data entry. I, I really just have to key the invoice number, the date, the due date, the amount. And then if I've keyed an invoice of yours before, just like in QuickBooks, it will remember what account it goes to. And then later on, when I hit the sync button on my bill.com software, it'll actually sync that bill back to my QuickBooks software. Oh, I see. Okay. So, and then what you'll see will happen, because I haven't done it yet, um, is I will also go in there and ask, essentially click a button that triggers bill.com to send you an email letting you know that I've invited you to uh, sign up for ePay because this way the money gets wired directly into your account, you just provide the information and that's really nice because then from the day I pay it, it's in your account in like two days. It's really, really nice. Okay. I mean, uh, I, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, the more I hear about Bill.com. Apart from I, I know, you know, I'm, I'm learning because I want to use it for clients. You know, I've got clients that are very slow on that whole bill, bill paying process, as we've all experienced, I'm sure. So I've got, you know, I've, I've got more of a need for it nowadays than I have even, you know, recently. So. It's funny because I have clients now reaching out to me after they see the link on my email that goes out with my invoice. They'll click on that link and go and make their payment online, and then they end up emailing me saying, that is the coolest service. Like, what is that? And that's so that it, it basically starts to sell itself. So when you do sign up for it, make sure that you tell them you want to become an affiliate because they pay you a nice little fee for each referral that you send them that goes past the free trial and actually starts paying. Hey, this is pretty interesting. I just... Pasted the, those first two paragraphs in Google, and I go and click on the links that go to her site. And even though they were just there a minute ago, right now they're coming up as a 404. She's listening. <laughs> <laughs> Rock on. Rock on. <laughs> you just go, Nancy. And we did this all without cussing. Well, she did say shit. <laughs> I could have said more. I know, and I said thank you because you. Did, I noticed you curbed it. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. To, the, to, to those that are listening that want to go and uh, mess around doing things like that, you know, just be told, you know, you're being watched. <laughs> you, you are being watched. <laughs> well, that's the web for you. I mean, that's the internet. It makes everything so transparent. That's one of the things I really love about the internet. The World Wide Web. It's making it 
more and more difficult for people to go out there and BS other people. Because the second you get sort of, you know, uh, caught for being a fraud of any kind, everybody will know about it. So it is just really dumb to carry yourself with anything less than the utmost integrity. You know, speaking of which, I had a meet that did a paper in college where the site, when she was citing what she was writing about and stuff like this, was literally like six pages long because you can no longer just cite something and get away with it, not in, not cite something and get away with it nowadays. So basically the whole paper was almost written by 30 other people and then a few blurbs and lines of her own stuff. And that was pretty much about it. Yeah, that's kind of where we're coming down to. It's almost there's no original thoughts anymore. You know, I, I was I was so mad when I got that email this morning. It, one of the first things I wanted to do was just take that blog down. You know what, Nancy? It looks like she just took down her whole blog. I just went to her home page, and the blog is completely gone. Really? Well, well I know then she maybe there wasn't a stinking thing in that blog that was really hers. There very well may not have been. And for all you know, she thought her SEO person was doing it all and doing it right, and maybe she just learned through this. Because as you know, you're not the only one who was plagiarized by them. Yeah, not only is the blog gone, the link's gone, everything. Yeah, they, it, they took the whole blog down. Yeah. While we were talking. Yeah, uh, while we were talking. That may be coincidental because I know that you know, I know of somebody else, I'm not going to bring somebody else's name into the picture who's not here, but I know of somebody else who they plagiarized badly from, who re re that's how I knew who probably plagiarized Nancy, because this other person reached out to them yesterday, and, you know, basically it was all over them, saying, you need to take my stuff down off your site. Yeah, they removed the blog completely. Yep, yeah. it's, 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 the it's gone. It's completely gone. They just disabled the entire blog, and probably realized that everything in there has been plagiarized from elsewhere and somebody in there when we go to the about us let's see if a picture has been removed no nope, nope there's still all eight of them there <laughs> yeah that's what I was looking we might we might lose Adrian Montgomery <laughs> might come off there in a minute <laughs> she's gonna get a pink we, slip this hangout now is the tax hangout and internet police <laughs> Boy, they're not going to wind up. I wonder what we get for whistleblowers. That's it. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's funny. While we were sitting here, that blog disappeared. That's nice. Well, there you go, Nancy. Well, I guess I don't have to go take down my blog. I, I, was, I was so ripped. You, know, well, you I, shouldn't take your down because someone steals your content. That's not the way. That's not the thing to do. Well, prevent them from doing it, and you know I work too stinking hard to have somebody doing that crap. Oh, I know, I know. Not only that, right now I am so stinking tired that you know, for two cents, if somebody said to me, "Take the next year off, I'll do your job <laughs> for you," I'd be like, <laughs> "Bye." I don't even know if I'd say bye. <laughs> The door definitely wouldn't hit you. I know that much. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. I'd go to Bora Bora and hide behind a mask. <laughs> Nicely yeah, done. So, so, so that, that search engine marketing person, for sure. I mean, that, obviously, they don't work for DBS. As I'm, I'm, uh, I was looking on LinkedIn, and there they are. Their own little company. I wonder if they just lost a contract. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm wondering. I wouldn't hire them anyway. Well, There's it's what? funny that the, the, the About Us page talks about integrity. And <laughs> 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 well, that's like, that reminds me of a long time ago. It was right after I bought my house, um, maybe like six months after. I was contacted by uh, a mortgage or refi company, and they called themselves Integrify. And in the end, after my whole experience with them, they turned out to, to be anything but, you know, integrity. You know, it was the typical kind of scam where 
It started with like a fax they sent me that promised, you know, a 1% rate on my payments. But of course, when you investigate, in order to get the 1% rate, you have to put so much money down that nobody can afford to do it. So now you're looking at more typical terms on a process. And then, so I bottom lined it for the girl and I said, you know, if you can refinance both of my loans such that it is at a fixed rate for 30 years, and no BS, no five-year arms, no balloon payments, none of that crap, you know, then we have something to talk about. Find me a deal like that and let's talk. And she came back to me at a certain point uh, um, claiming to have found such a deal. And when the notary showed up, sure enough, there were two sets of loan documents. So right off the bat, it looked fishy. And sure enough, one of them, the bulk, the bigger loan, you know, and, and she did it. She did, and when I got on the phone with her, she got very upset with me for calling her on it. But she claimed that she did accomplish what she promised, and she did insofar as the payment itself. She did get the payment reduced. But if I had signed those documents that day, I would not be in my home right now. So it's funny, when you say that you have integrity, you better be able to back that up. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, uh, our hour is up, and I need to go to the bank. Well, that's a good are you yeah, depositing or withdrawing? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I've changed my business structure, and I need to open up new accounts with my new information. I thought you were saying you changed Congratulations. your business model and you now make deposits only, no withdrawals. <laughs> There's that, too. That's, that's what I told my, my son, that the Savings Bank of West Charleston had gone belly up because there had been too many dip withdrawals and not enough loan repayments. That's funny. All right, folks, we'll see you all Friday. Yes, okay. at ABO, we'll be there. Thanks, Bye. everybody, for coming, and I'll see you later. Okay, thanks. Take it easy.